Hello, I am John of Video Games in the World. Before we begin our weekly news, I'd like to remind you all to wash your hands, stay home even if you're not sick, drink hot liquids such as tea, maintain a healthy diet, drink lots of water, and stay safe and healthy. Together, we can all help fight against the coronavirus. Be strong and healthy, all of you. If you're sick, call your doctor and stay home. Do your part to fight this disease, all right? What's up, gamers? This is John, host of Video Games in the World. So, due to the COVID-19 outbreak, we have been having a very difficult time. Lots of things have been canceled, delayed, and businesses have temporarily shut down to prevent further contamination of the virus onto other people. And the worst part is that so many people tested positive and so many more have died, mostly seniors. My heart goes out to all those who lost a loved one. But fear not, people. We're going to over overcome this. We are all going to kick that son of a bitch coronavirus's ass so hard that the next coronavirus wannabe is going to feel it. My job is to entertain you with the latest news, my game playthroughs, my web series, and so on. So, let us begin our news, shall we? So, our first news is how the COVID-19 is leading to so many delays and it looks like this whole thing will not settle down very quickly. The COVID-19 has caused massive video game casualties such as E3 2020. Even though we saw the new PS5, it could also be facing a delay. What a bummer, eh? Many developers are struggling to meet their deadlines, but unfortunately due to the outbreak, they will not. Titles such as The Last of Us Part 2 and Ghost of Tsushima will be hit very hard due to the virus. The developers are struggling to put the final touches on the game, but the Blu-ray manufacturing will cause a lot of problems and will have trouble setting, getting in stock. Publishers may consider digital-only releases, assuming the software is able to be processed and uploaded to the PlayStation Store, of course. The upcoming Call of Duty title has also been delayed as well should the virus continue, sadly. Now, I know we all want to play all these brand new awesome upcoming titles, but the best thing to do right now is keep each other safe. Because this virus is not messing around. It's worse than the H1N1 back in 2009 and the SARS virus back in 2003. But fear not, we are going to kick its ass so hard that the next coronavirus wannabe is going to feel it. So, the production of the fourth season of Netflix's Stranger Things has been shut down due to fears of the coronavirus. Stranger Things is not the only one affected, of course. Lots of movies such as Fast and Furious 9, No Time to Die, Mulan, Wonder Woman 1984, and Black Widow have been pushed to August or September, and many movie theaters had closed down for three months, such as AMC. The Warner Brothers Television Group re released a statement regarding the situation. With the rapidly changing events related to the COVID-19 and out of an abundance of caution, Warner Brothers Television Group is halting production on some of our 70-plus series and pilots currently filming or about to begin. There have been no confirmed cases of COVID-19 on any of our productions, but the health and safety of our employees, casts, and crews remains our top priority. During this time, we will continue to follow the guidance for the Centers for Control Disease Control, as well as local officials and public health professionals in each city where our productions are based. To all these producers, writers, directors, and actors, take some time and spend it with your families. Fight the virus with unity and strength, and don't let the asshat virus grind you down. Give in to fear, you'll be sick. Show no fear and be strong to kick its ass. So coronavirus, screw you. So, second news. I spoke to all of you about Silent Hills last week. Well, there are rumors that Sony is reportedly producing and funding two new Silent Hill exclusives for PlayStation. A Silent Hills remake with Kojima Productions at the helm and a reboot of the classic original game. 
Hideo Kojima will be at the helm of Silent Hills. Meanwhile, the original Silent Hill creator Keichiro Toyama will lead the reboot, alongside other series vets like creator designer Masahiro Ito and Akira Yamaoka, who composed the soundtracks for Silent Hill. Back in January, Ito confirmed he's wor currently working on a new project. Sony Japan Studio will lead the Silent Hill reboot and production has been underway for a year or so, sources say. Of course, Kojima-san wants to revive Silent Hills, but he wants to make another horror game similar to the style of PT. Honest to God, I hope this is all true, because I had major hopes of playing Silent Hills when I played the PT demo. I still have it on my PS4, and I still scream so loud at this part. Oh, Jesus. That thing still gives me a heart attack. Up until this day. Okay. So, come this June, a decade ago, I bought my PS3, and my first game was Modern Warfare 2. Such a fantastic game. Enjoyed the story, playing against other players in multiplayer, the music was fantastic, the graphics were spot on, etc. So, according to a recent leak, there is a Modern Warfare 2 remastered game on the works and could be released as early as 2021. The 2019 Modern Warfare game was phenomenal, no doubt about it. And so was the remastering of the original Modern Warfare, which was released in 2007 and was a huge success. The Gaming Revolution, a Twitter user best known for accurately leaking information on Modern Warfare's Warzone mode, is responsible for this intel. Along uh, Modern Warfare 2 Remaster, the user also said that a sequel to Modern Warfare is in the works, as well as a free-to-play Call of Duty title. This is all on top of 2020's untitled Call of Duty release due out in the fall. We have seen so many Call of Duty games since its very first game back in 2003. As the years went on, the game franchise evolved from World War II to contemporary combat, futuristic combat, and also a return to World War II with Call of Duty WW2. Damn good game, by the way. With Josh Duhamel as one of the characters. The Modern Warfare remake was fantastic, no doubt about it. But this remastering will be as enjoyable as the original game released back in 2009. Next news. The Final Fantasy VII remake is on its way. And of course, many fans of the original are waiting for the day of its release. However... This new game will feature familiar places as well as brand new ones, not just expanded. The game's director, Tetsuya Nomura, explained that after watching many video playthroughs of the original game, he felt that there was more we could do to take players across Mid and around Midgar. He also explained the following. You travel through the slums in the original game quite a lot, explains Nomura, but it didn't really feel like we used the upper city all that much. And I thought we should have done that. Of course, you do go back to Medgar later and see some different scenes there, but I felt it would be nice if we could see more of the upper layer in the earlier part of the story. It seems then that we'll be seeing entirely new parts of Medgar in the course of the remake. I thought it would be good to open up some of the locations so players could explore more of those places that they wanted to see when they play the original. People wanted to go into this building or see that facility, so I think you will get even more of a feel for Medgard than you did the first time. To be honest, I'm very happy with this type of expansion, seeing places we never got to see before in the original game. Hopefully it'll be like in the Medgard areas that we saw in the prequel Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII. <sighs> Honestly, I wish Crisis Core had a remastered version. Should that happen? I would die a very happy man. Also, this is a news that's that really pissed me off this week. GameStop is going broke, and they are so desperate that they continue digging their own grave. In this global pandemic, many, many businesses all over the world had to shut down to prevent the virus from spreading. 
What really pissed me off this week is that GameStop decided to ignore warnings of the virus and continue to operate. <sighs> what the hell, GameStop? What in the blue hell? So you're choosing to ignore the safety of your workers because you're so desperate to get money from all the games and other merchandise you sell? Not cool, bro. Not cool. Some district leaders have been instructing associates concerned about coronavirus to not come into work and stay home. They will not be needing a doctor's note if they in turn and to return after being sick. They are indeed encouraging employees to pay for cleaning supplies out of their own pocket offering suggestions on places to pick them up. Now, I have bought most of my games from GameStop, even my Nintendo Wii, my PSP, my PS3, and my PS4 as well. But this is something I do not like on their part. Because not only they are risking the safety of their employees and their customers, but also their own. It turns out that due to this extremely stupid course of action of game GameStop has taken, not even Reggie himself is going to save the company. Might as well let it die at death. At least many stores had the good sense to shut down in California. And finally, to wrap this up, weekly news up, Rosario Dawson was chosen to portray the Clone Wars fan favorite character, Ahsoka Tano, for the second season of The Mandalorian. Rosario is well known for being in many movies, such as Men in Black 2, Sin City, Death Proof, A Dame to Kill For, various DC animated movies where she voiced Wonder Woman, and so on. On TV, she is known for her role as Claire Temple in Daredevil, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, The Defenders, and Jessica Jones. Now, Ahsoka Tano made her debut in the 2008 CGI Star Wars The Clone Wars movie as Anakin's Padawan. She was not as well received by fans at first, but as the series progressed, she totally became a fan favorite of the show. Ahsoka Tano is voiced by Ashley Eckstein in the cartoons, and in this live-action show, Rosario Dawson will portray the character. I can't wait to see how good Rosario is going to be. Dawson has been a top pick in regards to fan casting, and playing Ahsoka is something the actress has expressed interest in multiple times. As recently as January this year, Dawson was campaigning on social media to portray Ahsoka on The Mandalorian. Now, those dreams have come true. But of course, I also read that some fans were not happy about her playing the role. To those who are not happy, she wanted to play the character, she was chosen, so get the hell over it! But what's bothersome even more than that is that the cancel culture NPC woke mob is trying to get her off the role due to some things she did in the past. Why do you have to judge someone for someone's past mistakes? Humans make mistakes and learn from them! Those NPCs think that they're the final arbiters of what's acceptable and unacceptable in the world. So let me tell you something, NPC woke mob. You don't get to decide what people say, do, and think. You don't get to decide who should play who in a TV show or movie. Christ almighty! These people are the new Spanish Inquisition. I said that before and I said it again. And that's all, people. Comment, share, hit that like button, follow me on Facebook and Twitter, and subscribe. Oh, and don't forget to hit that bell. I am John of Video Games in the World. Stay healthy and safe in these difficult times. Peace.